again we are going to continue our class which we have left and explain in the earlier class where we have started with what is uh, human or uh, human activity which is classified into economical and non economical economical activities we have discussed is of three types profession employment and business in the earlier class i explained to you very clearly about what is meant by profession how the profession people will help the society then i discussed with you about the employment now we are going to start with a very very important concept of our commerce called as business business is the third important economical activity wherein every one in his way in his life engage to earn some money in order to satisfy his human wants so normally we will every person to whom we see if they are busy in some work we will call them as they are engaged in doing some business so business means busyness or busy in some work where you are engaged in return to earn some income or money we will call that as a business so business involves work efforts and acts of the people what is meant by work suppose if you go to a chair manufacturer if you go to a chair manufacturer he will manufacture the chair his work is depending on manufacturing of a wooden chair a manufacturer who is engaged regularly in producing or manufacturing a wooden chair he will try to manufacture the wooden chair by putting his work efforts what all the efforts he is going to put for converting the raw wooden into a finished product like he will buy the teak he will employ employees or we can call them as a labor or we can also call the skilled people in converting the wooden teak into the skills finished product okay that is cutting the wood according to the shapes of a chair fixing them with ferricol or putting the nails screws or giving the final touch or polishing touch and making the raw teak into the wooden or polished or semi polished teak where we can use for sitting or doing some official work so work means we are what is the work you are undertaking we will call that as our work efforts to complete the work into raw to finish that means incomplete work which you are undertaking with an object of completing that and getting some income we will call that as efforts what are those efforts is an efforts me total ga oka work complete chese kandu pete efforts ni we will call that as a efforts in converting the this uh, raw goods or incomplete semi finished goods into finished goods then acts now once you put your work and efforts to do the business that is what is your work you are engaged regularly in manufacturing of a chair so you cannot simply on your own work or your own uh, skills cannot complete the one work then you will take the help of other people also you will put your efforts along with the help of some other people you will convert that chair raw chair raw wood into uh, finished wood or wooden chair 
So simply if you manufacture the chair, we cannot call that as a business. Because out of our definition, we have completed only two essential things like work and efforts. And you have to put also those activities which help you in converting the commodity into money. That means what is the commodity which you manufacture? If you keep that commodity with yourself, then there is no use for you as well as for the people also. Because you have invested some money on manufacturing of a certain commodity. You have put your work, you have put your skills, you have taken the help of some other people in the society like labor, helpers, uh, people, those who are having a knowledge of cutting the woods, people who are having the knowledge of helping you or assisting you in your activity, then for them you have to pay the regulation. That means you have appointed them to work under you by taking the help of their efforts in your business. So, if you keep this wooden chair with you, it is not called as a business activity. Because business activity tells very clearly, when you manufacture one commodity, it should be sold in the market to the concerned person who is in need of that commodity. Then the third essential element of the business comes into business called as acts of the people. That means you have to market that good to those communities where this commodity is being demanded. Where the chairs will be demanded more? In the offices, in the schools, in the colleges, in the hotels, in the restaurants. So you cannot go as a manufacturer everywhere and you cannot ask them to keep this commodity with them and sell and give you the money. So what you will do, you will take the help of some other people like the marketing agents, marketing managers, sales representatives and you will take the middlemen, those people who are helping you to sell this commodity. All those acts of the people which are connected with the production of wealth. That means all these three activities which you are undertaking in your life in order to earn some income, we will call that as business. So what is mean by business now? Business means nothing but it is the work, efforts and acts of the people which are connected with the production of goods and services in order to earn income or wealth, we will call that as business. So it is very important for us for exam point to marks answer. What is business? Business means work, efforts and acts of the people which are connected with the production of wealth. Why you are undertaking this whole activity in your life? Your main objective, your main uh, goal in your life is to make profit. Profit is nothing but in other terms we can also call that as wealth. Why we are calling it as a wealth? Wealth is generated from your assets. So you are keeping your assets, your energy, your mind. For you, your mind is one type of an asset without which you cannot survive in the life. So you are using your brain, you are producing one commodity, you are selling that commodity in the market and you are in the process of selling that commodity. You are using the specialized skills of some other people and you are marketing that commodity. Why? Only one reason. That is for earning wealth. So it is very clear girls now. Have you understood my way of teaching? Because business means it is nothing but such an activity where work, efforts and acts of the people which are connected with the production of wealth is known as 
business. In simple, there are so many people who have given the definition of business according to the professionalism. Like one of the important person's definition we will read from our textbook that is called Henry Foy. Okay, that we can go through. But now here is the simple and easy definition which will give you very fast and easy two marks in your exam. Business. Business means it is an act. It is a business means it is a work, efforts and acts of the people which are connected with production of wealth. It is called as a business. So every activity now we are going to discuss what is characteristic features of business. So before we discuss that business, how you will understand an activity as a business? Now suppose if you take a hundred rupees note, currency note in your hands. How we will recognize that hundred rupees currency paper, whether it is hundred percent a correct note, not a fraud one. It depends upon the color, the way you will see the test in the currency note with your fingers where the, in the middle you should have some light the Gandhiji's photograph should be in the laughing specified on both the sides RBI governor's signature should be there and other numbers legality of that currency will be tested before you take that currency from some other person because fraud currencies also will be the same manner but when we do the differentiation distinction between one paper currency with another paper currency. We will judge the fairness of that paper. Like that only every activity cannot be taken or considered to be a business activity. Business means always it has these five characteristic features. If a business is not satisfying these five characteristic features, then that activity cannot be considered as a business. First one, sale, transfer and exchange. Sale, sale means, Telugu we will call it as Ammadamu. We will call in Hindi, Bechna. We will sell. Suppose, now you produce the wooden chair. You produce this wooden chair for 700 rupees. You have produced this wooden chair for 700 rupees. For this 700, you will add some profit, 200. And you will fix the rate, cost price. The price at which you are going to sell this in the market. It is, sorry, this is selling price. This is your cost price. And this is the profit. Cost price for you manufacturing is 700. You added profit and it has become to 900. Now, when you sell the product in the market, you will not manufacture only one wooden chair. You will manufacture more and more number of wooden chairs. So you will fix the price of this wooden chair. 900 that is including the profit that means when you have struggled when you have put efforts when you have taken the pain of manufacturing the wooden chairs you have noticed that the chair has costed you 700 rupees to manufacture one so you will not sell at cost you will have some profit and you decide 900 rupees as the price for which you have to sell when you are selling this at 900, that there should be a person to buy this commodity, we will call him as a customer. We can also call him as a data. Data. And then, Konewalu, customer. Customer means a person 
who is buying the goods from the seller. So to me, they might have what this person is going to become. He is going to become seller. He has manufactured one chair for nine hundred. That is including profit because as per the business secrets, business law, we will not disclose our profit in figures, in words to the customer. So, what is the price you fix to the commodity itself will include the profit what you add in the on the commodity. The profit what you add on the commodity. So, nine hundred you have decided the price at which you have to sell the chair to the buyer. In buyer level, who is called as buyer? The person who is buying the goods from you. is called as either customer or data so you are exchanging he is giving money 900 rupees to you and you are you are giving a chain okay girls so who is called as seller here the person who selling the goods to another person is called as seller and the person who is giving the money in return Because when you manufacture, you will manufacture with an intention or with an objective or with the sole aim of earning money. That is, we are going to call it as profit or wealth. So you will exchange for some price. That price who is giving to you, customer. So customer is exchanging currency with the Commodity with you. That means whatever the commodity is having with you, that commodity you are giving to another person for some price. We will call that as sale. And then manufacturer, this is our word. Customer ki goods amme tapu, they will have some motive in their mind. Call it as business profit. So when they sell one commodity, word. Commodity ni customer ki sunon customer the kar keli double this good no such a transaction is called as a sale transaction okay or we can also call exchange of goods or we can also call transfer sale transfer a transaction business transaction and it always it should include three essential things. Either it may be a sale, sale at it two times. Okay, the cash immediate ka double reward ko mana kamal sir was kuri this ko ne lada. Ninety nine percent ko market ko ne pura ekna ekka ekna mana this ko ne kado pote. Immediately double is kar ki kamal sir was kuri this ko ne. That is called as a cash transaction. Okay, vega. Mere double reward ko ne commodity this ko ne lada. Mere payment. Process ni postponement JST, we will call that as a credit transaction. That means when you go to market, two type of transactions is one is called cash transaction. Immediately we will pay the money to the seller, we will take the commodity, they will sell the story ends. If you are postponing the payment after taking the benefit, then we will call that as a credit transaction. Both are called as a sale only for the seller. Transfer. When we are transferring the goods, so goods for one buyer, one manufacturer to another wholesaler or another businessman, we will call that as transfer because he is not selling the goods. He is giving the right of selling those goods to another person, but the ownership rights are still in the hands of original manufacturer. Then we call that as a transfer. Exchange. Exchange means suppose if you have purchased one commodity from the seller, but you are not satisfied with that commodity after one day or within a specified period. Then you have a right to exchange that commodity with some another commodity. Then we will call that as a sale, transfer, and exchange. All the 
thinks all these essential qualities should be maintained when you do business. Okay. Now the second one will go for dealing in goods and services. What is dealing? A businessman continuously should deal in goods and services. Suppose dealing in goods and services. A businessman either he has to procure the goods from a manufacturer or he has to produce the goods from his own resources and he has to continuously deal in purchasing and selling the goods and services as a regular part of his regular part of his activity, business activity, then such an activity will be called as a dealing in goods and services. If a man if a businessman is not in a position to manufacture, then he has to go for an alternative. He has to buy the goods from the manufacturer regularly and sell those goods regularly to the different customers in the small quantities. Then we will call that as a dealing in goods and services. That means so every business should continuously deal in goods and services. That means either if you are having a capacity to manufacture or if you are having a capacity to produce, you produce the goods and sell the goods. If you are not having that capacity, but if you are having a capacity to procure the goods from various suppliers or from other people, then you procure those goods, you collect those goods, you bring those goods at one place and you start selling them. For the sake of dealing in goods and services, a businessman has two types of goods. The goods are classified into two types. One is called consumer goods, another one is called producer's goods. One is called as what? Consumer goods, another one is called as producer's goods. Consumer goods are those goods which are directly purchased, uh, directly consumed by the customer after purchasing from the businessman. That means these goods are not further sold to any other person once a customer is buying from the businessman. They are called as consumer goods. These goods are those goods which a customer is going to buy from the businessman directly to consume. Example of these goods are biscuits, chocolates, powder, brushes, etc. That means those goods which we are going to consumer goods. We can take examples, biscuits, chocolate, powders, brushes, cloth, rice, jam. These are some of the examples of consumer goods. That means the seller, whoever is buying these goods from the manufacturer or producer of these goods, he will sell to the final consumer. That is a final person who is in need of these commodities. Such a goods are called as consumer goods. And a consumer goods are those goods which are purchased by a consumer finally to consume, to make him himself satisfaction. Okay, now producer goods. Producer goods can be also called as a capital goods. The other name for this producer goods are capital goods. These are purchased by producer goods are purchased by those people who are going to use these goods in the process of manufacturing of commodities in the business. They are not purchased regularly by the businessman. They are purchased only once. They are used in the process of converting the raw material into fine goods. Producer goods are those goods which are purchased by the businessman in order to convert the raw material into final commodity. 
is called as producer host. Example, plant and machinery, furniture, other type of goods, the assets which you buy in the business, assets are the properties. The properties are asked to do under the rule. Assets in the rule we will call it as a asked to do. Properties are those things which we will buy with an object of earning benefit from that properties. They are called plant. That means if you buy the plant or machine or furniture, motor car or if you buy xeroxing machine x-raying machine or any type of uh, moving machines or any type of machines which you use in converting some raw material into the final commodity which is called them as a producer source or capital source. This is your second feature in a business activity. Now the third one will go profit level. Every business man's main motive will be profit motive. No businessman will do the business with an object of not earning the profit. Maybe the motive of the businessman may be profit but the main motive of the businessman is profit. The profit should not be more. It should be a nominal one. Because every businessman's intention or object is to earn maximum profit. With the intention of earning maximum profit, he cannot adopt those activities like misleading customers, misleading the government, giving the wrong or false information or capitalizing the influences of the consumers should be avoided. That means giving false advertisements, giving bad commodities or adulterated commodities, poisonous goods. So, you should follow social ethics, morals and business morals in order to earn the profit in the business. Okay? Now, number four is continuity of the transaction. When a businessman is doing the business, every person cannot be called as a businessman because there is a difference between a businessman to businessman. When we will call a person as a businessman, when he is continuously engaged in doing the same activity regularly throughout the month, throughout the year, throughout his life, we will call him as a businessman. Suppose, example you take, if you are having a TV set in your house, if you are having a TV set in your house, old model, now not a recent model. That TV set you don't want to maintain in your house at a present situation. Your development of technology is there now. Everyone is opting for have a home theater or a big screen TV. So you have sold this TV set in a market and you purchase a home theater then this transaction cannot be called as a continuity of a transaction because it is not the duty of you to buy the TV sets and sell them again in the market. You are undertaking that activity only once in your life. You will not regularly buy the TVs, home theaters and you will sell because you are not interested to continue with the electronic item which is there in your house which has become outdated, you don't have any interest in keeping this. You want to go for the need correctly and the modern trend you want to use. So home theater you want to buy, you have some shortage of funds in your pocket. So you want to dispose of this TV set. So when you dispose of, you will get some money in return for the sale of this commodity. So that money you will club with your past savings and you will try to buy the home theater. Then you will not be called as a business transaction because you are not a businessman 
and the transaction which you have done that cannot be called as a business transaction there is no continuity in the transaction it is done only once so when you take once transaction shape then it is not called as a business transaction suppose if you have opened a electronic dealership of selling TVs, iron box, home theaters, or washing machines, music systems. Continuously, you are buying from a manufacturer or from the dealers who are in the middle. They are supplying to you. Then every day you will be selling some hundreds of. Electronical items and will be making profit out of the same. Then we will call that as continuity of transaction. Then the last one we are going to call it as every business activity should have risk uncertainty. What is the risk? Risk is called as an integral part of commerce because if you take Every human being's life is involved of risk. No one has imagined today in the world they are going to see this epidemic like Corona. So it is, it will be affected to anyone. No one can say that they are free from that effect. That is called as uncertainty. What happens in the business? When it happens? Why it happens? If it is happened like this. What is the effect on your business is unimaginable, unbearable, unpredictable. So every business will have risk involved while you do the business. The business will have the risk in the form of financial, in the form of management. Financial means you may get the problems in the business in the form of profit. Or loss. That means every business we are starting with an objective of profit. But sometimes in the business you have to undergo the losses also. Every time you cannot say I will get only profits. I will do the business only I will, when I get the profits. You have to do the business even if you are suffering the losses also. Then only you will be called as a businessman. Okay, when the profits are chilling up, we may business just the loss are chilling up, but business must come to some time. Okay, you will not be called as a businessman, and that cannot be counted as a business feature. So that is financial. Then management. Always the management is a part of the business. The people who are going to manage the business activities in a systematical manner. All the decision strategies, fixing the prices to the goods, these are managemental steps. So when they take the decisions regarding demand, supply, fixing of the prices, what all the prices they fix, cost plus for a prop, cost plus price to the commodity or uh, inflation price to the commodity or cost push uh, price to the commodity when they are fixing. We cannot estimate that the price what they have fixed will help them in increasing the demand or decreasing. Apart from this, uncertainty exists. When you buy the commodities in large quantity, you have to store them in your go-rounds or in your store rooms. So when you store them in your go-rounds, your capital is blocked. Capital means nothing but initial investment. What the investment you do in the business at the beginning of the opening is called as an initial investment. When you keep your investment in the form of stocks, goods, in the form of the quantity of goods which you have produced or purchased from outside, till you sell them to the customers, you have to take care and you have to store in a proper place. We have to see whether the storeroom has a modern facility to protect the goods from all the type of hazards like fire accident or 
adulterated or short circuits or protection from the ants, protection from the insects. So, if you don't take proper steps, then we get natural calamities like cyclone, heavy rains, earthquake. The storerooms which you have constructed and kept your goods at a, such a place safely, if they are not safe, your capital is lost in them. So, and no one can predict or no one can say anything what is going to happen in the business. A good businessman should always be ready to bear all the consequences in the business. That is called risk time.